Next question is from Teeny Tangy. Are there any lessons you have had to learn twice? Oh shit! Ooh. Uh, Personal uh, working out. I think. I think. Oh, working out. I learned uh, every lesson fifteen times. Yeah, before. yeah. And I feel like I feel like that's too. <laughs> that's easy. a gimme. I yeah. feel like that's too easy if we go the the working out. I yeah, mean, like I think, working out too hard. I think every I, lesson. I think that's why I think we have so much patience and empathy, and I think why we repeat. Uh, things over and over on this podcast is because I, I remember, and I'm sure you all remember, um, a lot of the lessons that we teach, uh, they had to be taught to myself <laughs> mm -hmm. more than once, you know, like I, I had to like change to do it and then see the results from it and then still go back to old behaviors or habits. And then again, so yeah, you know, let me think of a personal one uh, that comes to mind that I, I've had to to learn. Yeah, the workout learn. ones are easy. It's yeah. like, yeah, well, I have, working out too hard. Uh, yeah, I've learned that one, I don't know, a thousand times, mm -hmm. you know, not doing proper mobility work. I still am learning that, that lesson. Um, diet stuff, I learn that shit all the time. It's like I'll eat something and then afterwards I have, oh, my stomach. And I'll be like, oh, well, yeah, because you ate that. Duh. And then you end up, you have to keep relearning. That happens a lot, and I think, I, I you know I think the lessons I learned once were the ones that caused a huge consequence. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, right? You, you know, if like texting in the car, like if I did that and then I hit a car and caused someone an injury, I could see myself learning that lesson because the consequence was so terrible, right? Mm -hmm. But it's if it's if it's not that, I don't know very many lessons I haven't had to be exposed to several times in a row. Yeah, I'm trying to think of a, a good, um, a personal one. Like, you know, I always talk about how your your greatest strength is your greatest weakness, right? So there's things that I tend to lean into because I know that's my strength, but then bites me in the ass many times. And like an example of that is like uh, I'm assertive. And uh, a lot of times that serves me, serves me in business to take charge, lead, do these things. But then it, if my social awareness is is lacking that day, uh, many times I could really turn somebody off and it could kill a business deal. It could rub somebody the wrong way. And so this is a lesson that I constantly learn. Uh, it's, and I, I don't think I ever, uh, or I should say I'm constantly learning. Uh, it, I'm, I don't think I've perfected it. You know, how do you, how do you know always like this is the time I lean in hard to the assertiveness or this is the time where I back off, like always trying to refine that. So I'm constantly learning that lesson. That's got to be a tough mm. one too, because I could see how after you had a situation where maybe you were too assertive, it's easy to defend yourself to yourself. Like, well, whatever, screw it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's just, yeah. That, that was their bad. You know, I should be. For many years, that's how I was. For many years, it was like, uh, I'm an acquired taste. You either, you know, <laughs> like, it is what it is. If you're too weak to stay hang, then, you know, I, I had that attitude for sure. And, you know, and as I got older and, and wiser, I, I think, uh, and more socially aware, I think that I've learned to, to know when to, to throttle it down and when to pull it back and, so, but I, I'm still, again, it's not, a, it's not a perfected skill. It's something that I'm always trying to harness. I have a similar one to that, but it's more geared towards, uh, like I will jump into anything like that I feel super passionate about and like an idea or mm. without like completely sitting down and, and doing the, you know, the, the research, the market research, the, uh, you know, like, like playing, like drawing it all out in terms of like, you know, the mind map and the, and the business plan and all this kind of stuff, uh, which to me, I felt has been a superpower because it's been able to allow me to make connections with people I wouldn't have before and learn these lessons that I can, um, you, you know, build off of. And but the the problem is is that mentality persists, which then I get myself back in a hole because I jumped in before really, uh, you know, doing my due diligence of of research and really like understanding what I was in for. So it's really, to me, it's more of a calculated risk. So I, I like learning that lesson like over and over instead of just jumping in with the risk because i'm willing to take the risk is to be a little bit more measured in that but still you know find that balance of like i can still figure this out like as i'm in there but just do a better job of actually like looking into it first i de that just reminded me of something that a lesson that i've learned um it was uh choosing partners i've done a lot of business ventures and many of them i've had partners and failed uh, more than once, right? So I made made the wrong decision uh, more than once, uh, enough to where I probably thought, oh, I should just never have partners ever again. Yet here I am in uh, a four-way partnership, right? Never, never even had. Sexy. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. 
but wow. you know, so. I think that in the past, uh, I tend, I tended to lean towards, uh, just either one, a friend or somebody I felt really comfortable with or, uh, somebody who I think was, was, had similar characteristics as I did. And I really think that what makes this work is that, um, the things that we have in common are our core values, which I think that's our foundation and that's important. But then we couldn't be more different as far as our strengths and business, and that's why it works so well. And I think I I didn't learn that. I wouldn't have learned that had I not had multiple partnerships fail and not work in the past to come to this place to recognize that, you know, understand that everybody in this in this partnership uh, plays a, a significant role. And uh, I, I could never do Justin. I could never do Sal. I could never do Doug, and that's a good thing. It's a and and because we have uh, similar values uh, that we always fall back on. That's the core foundation in the partnership. That a lot of that stuff wasn't taken into consideration in my twenties when I was partnering up with people. Um, that was a mistake. I think I had to learn more than once. I got one that I that I learned over and over again. That was recent. So you, you know, you talk about greatest strength is your greatest weakness. I, you know, I like to call that the shadow side of a, of an attribute, right? So you know, I have a lot of self belief, you know, self confidence. I have quite a bit of that, but the shadow side of that is arrogance, right? You can get so much self belief that it makes it hard for you to listen and hear other people. And I'm aware of this. Doesn't mean I'm good at it. it just means I'm aware of it. So I'm at the phase before I get good at it, I guess, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> but I had this I had this happen with uh, with my kids and with Jessica. So Jessica's always telling me that sometimes I'm not present, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm not paying attention or my mind is wandering or I'll be on my phone or whatever. And so I, you know, I, we were with the kids and we were talking about, you know, things that we do. And my daughter goes, yeah, she goes, sometimes you'll start a sentence and you won't finish it. It happens all the time. It's super annoying. And I'm like, what? And my, my son's like, oh yeah, you do that all the time. I'm like, what do you mean? You'll be like, oh wow, you guys. And then you'll look at your phone or, or trail off. And she goes, you need to work on that. My daughter says that to me. Now, Jessica has been saying that to me for a long time. I have not been listening to her because I'm like, yeah, anyway, I know, I know me, you know, I know, I know, but I don't, I don't always know me. And so it made me like, okay, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta listen more and consider that I may not be aware of something that someone else may be aware of, and I got to be able to consider that. But it was my kids. My kids were like, my daughter was like, yeah, that's a problem. She literally said to me, you need to work on that. Oh, uh, yeah. Papa. They're brutally honest. <laughs> yeah, and everybody was too. laughing at the table, and I'm like, shit. There's another <laughs> one. I, I, we were talking with the kids, and I'm like, who's got the worst temper? I'm thinking like, oh, you know, I'm not going to have the worst temper for sure. And my kids are like, oh, you easily. Like, holy shit, am I that not aware of like, <laughs> that I lose <laughs> yes. my temper? Dad yells. Yeah, I'm so, like, well, I don't yell. so learning to listen and, and consider people's um, either, you know, criticisms or complaints of me, especially people around me, uh, that's, that's a lesson that uh, I think I got to keep working on learning.